You know, I haven't done a YouTube video in quite some time. I've been doing a lot of live chats with you guys, but I think for tonight, I'm going to do a video for you. I think this is something that might benefit all of you on this channel because most of the things we talk about is family related, family trauma, family narcissism, family sociopaths, family psychopaths, and the list goes on. So I think in tonight's video, I'm going to really zone in on something known as coercive control. Yeah, here it is right here. So you guys can make sure that you get it, you understand it. Coercive control. Here's the definition right here. It is basically the idea that you are being forced against your will in a passive aggressive or manipulative fashion to do the things that you don't want to do. A lot of family narcissists and soci sociopaths, excuse me, and psychopaths deal with, you know, individuals in the family that they can manipulate and triangulate and control. And a lot of the time they are using something known as coercive control. It's a tool that is an invisible evil. It's an invisible abuse. And I'm sure a lot of you can imagine what that actually means. But in tonight's video, I'm going to go ahead and define that for you so that you will clearly understand what this is. But before we jump in, let me briefly introduce myself in case you are new. My name is Kimra. I'm an internationally and board certified trauma therapist. I'm also licensed in mental health. I specialize in treating children, teens, and families, as well as adults who are dealing with trauma. Let's go ahead and jump in. The use of threats, force, emotional abuse, dominance, gaslighting, stonewalling can all be weapons used against you in coercive control. I'm sure if you pause and think about it for a moment, you can identify somebody in your family that is just like this. They know how to push the buttons on you to, to trigger you to explode, to trigger you to say or do something that you know isn't right, to trigger you to behave in ways that is most likely going to be looked down upon they know who you are and it's not because they're wonderful and great and powerful it's mainly because they are manipulative most of them are narcissists most of them are sociopaths psychopaths and you know there's some traumatic bonding that tends to be involved as well you bond to a a person in your family who is good for the majority of the time but then sometimes very abusive and so you know when you don't want to see the truth or you're in denial or it hurts too much to accept the truth you kind of abandon that bad side of the person and you cling to the good side that is practically traumatic bonding it is also codependency in some ways or you know dependence emotional dependence so these kind of individuals who are narcissistic, sociopathic, psychopathic, controlling, dominating, they utilize coercive control against you because they know the buttons that they can push on you to get you to, you know, want to cling to them even more and forget the bad stuff, right? They know how to buy your love. They know how to buy your affection. They also know how to manipulate you in ways that could possibly lead to the legal loss of your children, you know, divorce, uh, being arrested, or being slapped with a protection from abuse order, maybe accused of stalking, the list goes on. Coercive control is typically used in families where there's a lot of toxicity and dysfunction at the core of the relationship. Let me give you an example of what this looks like. So let's say, for example, you married into a family and you thought you were married to a man who was wonderful. After five years of being with him, he starts to become abusive. He starts manipulating, he's lying, he's triangulating, and he's having an affair. You approach him and say, I want to get a divorce. And what does he say? To coercively control you to be afraid of him. If you divorce me that I'm gonna fight for custody for those children because remember the last the last time we went out uh, uh, for a date or for dinner you got drunk you were so drunk you didn't even know which way to go so then I'm gonna fight for custody for our children and I'm gonna see to it that you don't have access to them that is a narcissistic sociopathic individual who is utilizing coercive control against you. He knows what to do. An evil person like this most likely has pictures that they can prove. 
Uh, they also have sometimes text exchange, sometimes letters, emails, and sometimes a trusted friend that you thought was on your side, but tends to be on your husband's side the most. A narcissistic or sociopathic family member can also make up stories against you and somehow stir the pot in a way that causes you to explode and then you become the evil person. You become the vindictive person. You become the person who's the problem because they pushed all the right buttons, got you to respond, and so now they are controlling you passively or passive aggressively, so to speak, and you don't know how to get out from under this particular dominating person. So those are examples. Now, coercive control can also be in language, right? It could be how you're saying something, when you're saying something, and the, the specific language that you're using. For example, a a, a controlling tactic that is a tactic that is coercive could be something like, you know, a family member saying, if you, then I, right? If you don't A, B, and C, then I, right? If you don't blank, then I, right? That's a coercive control statement. Another co a way that, that coercive control can be utilized using language is, you know, why would you and who do you think you are, right? Or they could say something like, why would you if I fill in the blanks, right? Why would you tell somebody if I have photos of you doing that last year? That's coercive control. We also have something I introduced to the, the channel in my live chat, which you can find up here after this video if you'd like to go check that out. A term that I brought to the channel was role reciprocity. Role reciprocity, meaning there is no you do this for me and I do this for you. It's one way, it's rigid, right? It's controlling. You do this for me and that's it, okay? So a loss of role reciprocity is also something that you're likely to see as a tactic known as coercive control. How does this happen, right? What does this kind of look like? What is this defined as? Well, let's jump into that right now. Now, the first thing that you wanna think about when you're considering whether or not coercive control is happening in your family, you know, you really wanna ask yourself, am I walking on eggshells with this person? Am I, tipping, am I tipping around this person hoping that I don't cause them to explode? Am I trying to maneuver situations around them where we don't have to butt heads or have friction, right? So walking on eggshells is an example of coercive control. You, you know the individual is manipulative, they are aggressive, right? You know that they're dominating and abusive and the only way to have peace with them and to protect yourself against any kind of harm from them is to walk on eggshells. You also wanna keep in mind that coercive control is a form of family violence. It's a form of family violence that's very hard to prove, especially in a court of law. Coercive control mainly happens in child custody city cases, traumatic bonding situations, codependent relationships, and in divorce proceedings. And that individual knows how to aggress you, but in a passive way to where they win and they make you look like the bad one right they make you act out they push your buttons the list goes on you know they 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 get dirt on you so to speak they may even go to your friends okay and other family members and get information that's 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 defeating right there there's some defamation a, a defamation of character going on there you know and they will use that information to their advantage right some photos off your facebook some tweets that you put on twitter some youtube videos that you've been watching right if you like side five films and violent things and court cases they may be able to go to your youtube let's say if this is your husband or if it's a parent or another family member that has access to your social media they may go to your history on youtube and pull up all the videos you've been watching on jeffrey dahmer uh you know daryl brooks uh you know nicholas cruz and the list goes on and kind of use that against you in their situation and say you've been watching all these cases haven't you you're manipulative and i'm going to use this in a court of law against you or I'm going to tell mom that you've been watching all these videos and this is why you're controlling the whole family right so that is coercive control they use things against you 
You also want to consider that, you know, coercive control occurs in situations where there is codependency, where there's a dependent personality disorder, and where there's traumatic bonding, right? There's some kind of tie emotionally and psychologically to the person who is controlling you you know there's no healthy separation there's no healthy boundaries it's all enmeshment okay you're like this with that individual and that person can use coercive control against you just because you're like this i also want to consider that coercive control entails a a complex and subtle series of behaviors a complex and subtle series of behaviors it's not really easy to identify when somebody's using coercive control on you there's a complex and subtle series of behaviors in coercive control next thing that you want to look for is that behavior can sometimes appear socially acceptable and what i mean by this is whispering in your ear before you go inside the room to have a court case you know reviewed or processed or whatever right whispering in your ear is socially acceptable and they may whisper something like say the wrong thing and you will be destroyed what are you going to do right go to the police and say he whispered in my ear and said that i'm going to be destroyed they can't prove that he even did that behavior right there's no cameras that can show anybody that that behavior occurred and it's somebody whispering to you right he didn't flip the judge off he didn't you know attack you he didn't beat you up he didn't put his hands on you he just whispered in your ear before you went to have your case tried right that's an example of coercive control another socially acceptable form of coercive control is you know that may be a little bit more relatable for you is that let's say you have a bad situation within your dysfunctional unhealthy family involving your sibling right you know, maybe you're trying to stand up for mom and clean mom's house and take care of mom and make sure she gets to all her appointments and make sure that things are organized. Your sibling, brother, sister, whoever may come to to this your mom's house and say something like, did you know she could possibly reco be, be recording everything you're doing? Or did you know she put up a ring camera? That's really just to monitor you, not keep you safe. Coercive control. And it's socially acceptable, right? right socially acceptable she's talking to her mother and so manipulators and narcissists and sociopaths use this kind of behavior to get over on you and to get over on other people it is the most evil and family violent way of engaging now maybe i shouldn't say family violent. it i'll put it this way okay it is the most evil behavior ever and is it is violent it is it is it is passively violent in the sense that there's an intentional goal and that intentional goal is to hurt you within that family unit that family dynamic in that family system control usually ends up where the individual who's dominating you and controlling you tends to to explode at unpredictable times right right like you go to an event or you know it seems like you guys are getting along and all of a sudden they explode right they send you a series of text messages that are threatening they call you 900 times and tell you to leave them alone or they want to argue with you right they you know take out a protection from abuse order against you and you don't even know why they explode in an unpredictable manner that unpredictability especially if it happens a lot is a form of manipulation right because they're going to point the finger at you as the one who set them off i once had a family where the dad sat in therapy blew up and then called me the next day and said if carol wouldn't have this is an example if carol would not have set me off that would have never happened i've been holding it together since we got divorced and it just all piled up and now i'm exploding that wasn't the truth the truth was this that he was manipulating and controlling her and he wanted to come to therapy to show his judge he was doing what was right by his family so that he can go to court and then say i blew up and walked out because of her can't you you see what a bad mother she is he turned that whole situation around to his benefit it was the most sickening sickening example of coercive control that i had ever seen so coercive control is one of the most evil things that a family member can do to you uh let me know in the comment section below if any of you have dealt with coercive control and in what capacity who did this to you 
and how did you feel? Thank you so much for being with me in today's video, guys. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you would like to stick around with us and hit that bell button so that every time I post something, a live chat, a video, a community post, an update, whatever, you can get those notifications. I'll see you in the next video and hopefully in the live chat. Bye-bye.